Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Jira Advanced Roadmap tutorial, we are going to understand how you can do the capacity planning in Jira Advanced Roadmap. Now, before we get into the details of capacity planning in Jira Roadmap, let us first understand what is capacity and velocity. So many times people get confused between the capacity and velocity of the team. So when we talk about the capacity, I'll take an example of a team of say, for example, five members who are actually working within the team. They are taking the user stories and delivering the user stories. So if those five team members are not taking any planned leaves, so excluding planned leaves and any public holidays, the number of points that can be taken by those team members within that sprint or number of days that they can work, if you total that amount, that is what the capacity of your team is. Now, usually the teams in the projects, what they follow is Say, for example, you have five team members and there are no public holidays, no planned leaves. So basically in a week, in a two week sprint, you have 10 working days, right? Now, out of those 10 working days, teams usually assign eight story points or eight days of working for each of those members. So if a team of five members, there, are usually 40 story points or 40 working days for the whole team will be allocated as the team capacity. This is what the team has in their hand within that particular sprint. So that's the capacity. All right. Now, when we talk about the velocity, velocity is the actual outcome or the output. So say, for example, the team took 40 story points in sprint one. OK. And out of those 40, they were able to deliver only 35. OK, so that 35 and any subsequent outcome or the delivery that has been done by the team. So maybe in next sprint they have delivered 38 out of 40 and in the third sprint they have delivered 40 out of 40. So when you basically average that out based on the number of previous or the past deliverable of the team, then that is what the velocity of the team is. So capacity is what the capacity of the team is to take the word as the name suggests, right? I mean, I have the capacity to work for eight hours a day. So that's my capacity. But when we talk about the velocity, five days working continuously, I might not be able to focus for eight hours or deliver those the work items that have been allocated for eight hours every day with the same speed, right? So there might be possibility, there might be some blockers that come in picture and they might reduce my velocity. Okay, so this is briefly about the capacity and velocity. Now, Jira Advanced Roadmap provides very good feature of the capacity planning. So how you can do the capacity planning? Let's go ahead and understand that. So we'll create a new plan. OK, so go ahead to the plan and we'll click create plan. And in the plan name, let me give it a name capacity planning demo. Leave the access as open and make sure that in the issue sources, you select the board. So board for the project that you want to plan, right? So for example, iOS is the project that I want to plan and the Android. Now, why do we need to choose the issue source as board? Because sprint information, active sprint and all is associated with the board and board filter. So that is why we need to include the issue source as board and then uh, create. So once you create this plan, we need to do certain changes there in order to enable the capacity planning. Now, there's the basic view. If we go to the top level planning, you will see that these two projects are here and the issues that were there or the epics that were there along with their stories have been pulled in. Now, in order to enable the capacity planning, you need to go to the view settings. Then you need to group by either the team or the sprint. OK, so if you change it to team and ensure that show capacity on timeline is checked, then it will enable that capacity planning. Now, still, you will see that this team currently is not in this plan, right? So team we haven't added. So let's go ahead and add the team as well. And because you, you are able to see it because there are some if you see this pop up, it says it's appearing because it's assigned to issues in the plan. And that is why it is appearing, right? So there will be if I filter or add the teams here, you will see that this team is added, right? 
So what we'll do is we will add a team, new team here, and then associate that team or associate these items to th that team. Okay, so let me quickly delete all of these teams. And so everything will be in the unassigned, right? So every all of the issues are in the unassigned state at the moment in the plan. And then we'll add the team in this plan. So to add the team, we'll go to the team, right? So drop down, go to the team and click on add team. And there are existing share team that I have created. So I'll add those teams here. And then similarly, I'll add the iOS team. Okay, so two teams have been added. Now if we go to the top level planning, and then we can start adding the team, right? So this is the iOS Epic. So in the team, I can choose the iOS team for the user story there, okay? And similarly for the Android issues, I can choose the Android team and you will see the team will start appearing or the issues will get assigned to those teams, all right? And then you will see the message that associate this team with an issue source to view its sprints. So still we cannot see the sprint. This is another thing that we need to fix. Now, how do we need to associate this team with an issue source? In the issue source, we have ensured that we have selected board, right? But that's not enough to view these sprints. What we need to do is we need to go to the teams again. And here you will see that associated issue source is none. So we have to edit and click on the issue source as the board, save it. And similarly for the Android. So once you have saved it, if I go to the top level planning now, you will see the sprints have started appearing, right? And the capacity of the sprint and the points that have been allocated to that sprint, right? So if you see the hover, the pop up here, 30 is the capacity of the sprint and eight is the story points that have been allocated to that particular sprint. If I click on that, you will see that the eight of 30 points allocated and it will show you all the details about the sprint. Let me move this here. So you'll see that sprint capacity is 30 points. You can change the sprint capacity right from here as well. Say for example, for this particular sprint, I have the capacity of 34 points, right? then you can update that here and you will see that this is this change is this is saved in this particular plan right so that's another of another possibility right from the capacity plan other thing it will show is the status of the issues that have been allocated and then you can view the sprint in jira or filter issues and then view velocity chart right from here let me move it this from quarter to month so that we can see the or maybe week so we can see the sprints clearly and what I'll do is I'll remove the start date and end date and components so you can see the sprints, right? So now if I change it to months, you will see that the sprints are appearing for both of the teams, right? So this is sprint one, two, three, four, five, and accordingly the projected sprints will appear. And now you can do the sprint level planning and associate or align the issues, assign the issues for these sprints. And you will see what the capacity of that sprint is. And according to that, you can do the planning or the sprint level planning or capacity planning right from here in the capacity planning section of the advanced Jira roadmaps, right? Um, the next thing is, say for example, I'll show you how quickly can you do this planning, right? So if I add the sprint column here, right? So you will see that this story is assigned to sprint one. So I'll assign it to sprint one. Then from the unassigned, this is, let's go to the stories here. So these are being assigned to the sprint, but the team has been, hasn't been assigned. So that is why they are not associated there. So I'll assign the iOS team. And then you will see all of these work items are being, or the issues are being added to the prints, right? And similarly, we'll do for this one. So this is assigned to sprint five. And here, if I go to this iOS portal registration, you will see this is iOS sprint two. And if we go to this particular sprint, you will see the capacity is 30, but allocation is showing as zero. Why is that? Because these tasks haven't been estimated yet. So we need to make sure that we have the estimation for these 
these or the story points for these allocated there so say for example i'll assign the allocation or the story points 13 and come back then you will see the allocation if i refresh this you will see the allocation will be done successfully for those particular work items within that sprint you will see now it is showing that 13 of 30 points have been allocated now this sprint is 43 percent full okay so same way basically for the team level you can keep going through the task at the portfolio level and assign the sprint that have been created based on the priority of the deliverable and associate the team and if there are tasks and issues that haven't been allocated the story points then it won't it will show as allocated as zero so you have to make sure if it is showing as zero is even though you have associated these tasks and story points uh, stories there that means they haven't been estimated so you have to make sure those are estimated so that all the points add up and you can basically you know estimate those okay so say for example this one this task if i see so it doesn't have the story point field there so let's go back and see some other stories so this one say for example right so this is sprint 3 and these all are sprint 1 okay so all of these haven't been assigned the story points you see so if I say assign 20 story points or let's say put hypothetically 100 story points I just want to show you that if the allocated story points for a sprint exceeds the capacity you will see the warning there that this particular sprint is out of capacity right so this is over 333 percent so capacity is 30 but then the allocated point for this sprint is 100 so you have to basically you know on this particular view itself you will see how much the capacity is whether the sprint is overloaded you need to reduce the stories from there or the work items from that particular user story uh, from that sprint and plan accordingly in this particular section all right so this is a brief about how you can do the capacity planning in jira advanced roadmap couple of things while creation of the plan make sure the issue sources are boards when you allocate the team at the team level you have to go and make sure that the source issue source is selected right associated issue source is selected and this is what you have to do so there is one thing which is which is issue source from the configuration from here this has to be done as well as you have to make sure when you are in the plan you have to go to the team and for the team the issue source needs to be the board as well only then you will be able to see the top level the the capacity planning view that i'm showing you here okay so this is all about it and once you are happy with these changes you can simply review the changes right and then basically you can say yeah i'm good with this particular plan and if you're if you want to save it to the jira then simply save the selected changes in jira okay at the moment since you haven't changed it these changes are still in this particular capacity planning demo plan itself and not saved into the jira or the issues haven't been updated with all of the details that you have updated here okay so that's all for this tutorial on capacity planning in jira advanced roadmap i hope this was helpful thank you very much for watching